The Jays bring out the big bats in this one as they lay a whomping down on the Atlanta Braves, winning 13-5 down there at TD Ballpark. And what a ball game it was for the Toronto Blue Jays offensively. Look, Robbie Ray gave you a great start, but the storyline today were the bats. Great to see Teoscar Hernandez back. George Springer gets his second game uh, officially as a Toronto Blue Jay, and both guys did not disappoint. But let's talk about this game right from the top. First couple innings, you know, both teams trying to feel each other out. We're not really sure what's going on. And then the bottom half of the third inning with George Springer on, he gets on base from a uh, catcher's interference, and Bo Bichette comes up. <clears throat> Bo Bichette comes up. And crushes a ball to center field and gone. A two-run bomb for Bo. And the Jays are up 2-0 early. All right, exactly where you want to be. Next inning, with Lourdes Gurriel Jr. on, Alejandro Kirk comes up and he crushes one. And the crazy thing about that was a 3-0 pitch. They gave him a green light and he did not disappoint. Belting it to center. Way gone for, for Alejandro Kirk for I think it was the second home run of the year. And the Jays double their lead. It's now a 4-0 ball game. All right, we go to the bottom half of the fifth, fifth inning. Randall Gritchett crushes one to left. No doubter. Way gone for Gritchett. It's 5-0 Blue Jays. Couple batters later. Who's up again? Captain Kirk Alejandro Kirk comes up again. And he crushes yet another one. Deep and gone. A two-homer game for Alejandro Kirk. Simeon comes around to score. The Blue Jays are all they're feeling good. It's now a 7-0 lead. The offense is flying. They're crushing home runs. They're feeling great. Look, in the last game, they didn't have a good one there. I think it was against the Nationals in the, in the finale of the two-game set. But they go out there today, and man, do they look good. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Up comes Teoscar Hernandez. He had a single early on in the ball game, but he comes up and just flat out crushes a ball to straight away center. A fastball up in the zone, and it's way gone for Teo. A three-run bomb. Vladdy and Bo come around to score. It is a 10-0 Blue Jay lead. In the bottom half of the sixth inning, what a shot for Hernandez. Great to see our Silver Slugger back in the lineup. And the Blue Jays are feeling great offensively in this one. Top of the seventh inning, Ozzy Albies. It's a two-run shot off of Robbie Ray. And that kind of signaled the end for Rob. I think he's one more batter, and then that was his night. But what a day it was for Robbie Ray. We'll get to him and the numbers and the pitching staff later on. But let's keep going here. There was more offense. All right, bottom half of the seventh inning. The Blue Jays get some more, they get some more crazy offense. Espinal starts with a double. They get a couple more base runners. Then in a wild pitch, Espinal comes around to score. Next batter, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes up. And I this swing, the home runs are nice and, and whatnot, but that swing by, by Vladdy there in that, in that bottom half of the seventh inning was just beautiful. The fact that he had a fastball come in the inner half, he pulled the hands in and... Turned on it and got barrel the ball. Mm, beautiful. The fact that he can make that adjustment and still get barrel, it's incredible. An RBI single for Vladdy. In comes Alejandro Kirk again. And the Blue Jays grab both runs right back. It's now a 12-2 Blue Jay lead. And um, where were we here? Uh, oh, that must have been 13. Am I wrong? No, I, no, I was right. 12-2. Then in the top half of the eighth inning, the, the Braves try to make something interesting. You know, uh, Brocky has a rough time. Piams gives up an R a two-run single. They end up scoring three runs in the inning to make it a 12-5 ball game. But really, it was, it was never in any doubt at all. And then you go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. It's add insult to injury to the Atlanta Braves. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. hits a second home run in as many days. Solo bomb for him, putting the Jays up 13-5. And they just cruise to the 13-5 victory and are now 12-12 on the year. Back to 500 to the, go, go to the Toronto Blue Jays. And a lot of crazy numbers today. 14 hits. So 13 runs on 14 hits. They had six home runs. Six. And the thing that I love is not only did you get, you know, you have 14 hits, 13 runs, six. That, that's all beautiful. The Jays only struck out six times today as a team. Beautiful. 
That is music to my ears right there. I love that kind of stuff. Getting back to ball, great things happen. Hernandez, first hit of his, first hit of his, uh, his night, he didn't hit the ball hard off the end of the bat. But it dropped in for a single. You make contact, good things happen. I think Gurriel had a looping single as well. You make contact, good things happen. Now, let's get to the uh, let's get to the pitching staff and talk about who did what today. We talked about Robbie Ray and him being stellar. Ladies and gentlemen, when Robbie Ray was traded over here last season, what was the giant question mark? What was the, what was the big uh, thing that we're like, man, we're not this is his big problem. Throwing strikes. We saw as the season went on last year, and even in that one game in the playoffs, he kind of figures something out. Now, there were some games where he was really bad, but overall, he he didn't do all that terrible. He was throwing quite a bit of strikes. So far this season, other than that one start against the Kansas City Royals, and, and going back to spring training as well, he's been throwing a lot of strikes. His fastball's up. He's at 98 today. And ladies and gentlemen, Robbie Ray in back-to-back -back outings. Has not walked a batter. Not one. He went six and two thirds today. Allowed five hits, two runs. If I'm not mistaken, th all three, uh, three of the five hits uh, happened in that in that one inning where he gave up the two run shot to Albies. Maybe maybe two of the five hits. But either way, you know he was great. He was dealing all game long. Two runs over those five innings. Obviously the two run shot in the seventh, and then five strikeouts and did not walk a batter. And he was really efficient. His pitch count was nice and low. I mean, Robbie Ray's stuff has been unbelievable so far this season. Uh, you could arguably say that he's our second best starter this season. Well, but Steven Matz has been great. Yeah, he has. But his last start wasn't great. Robbie Ray has not had that type of start yet. Robbie Ray has been very good in just about every single outing. Even that Kansas City Royals outing where he wasn't particularly great, he didn't allow a run. So he found a way to get out of all the damn all the jams that he got himself into. So I'm I'm loving what we're seeing from Robbie Ray early this season. Obviously, it's very early, and according to an, uh, updates, Ryu has been running. He ran. I think he ran pole to pole today, and, and and did some walking as well. So that's good news on the on the on the glute front for uh, for Hyunjin and Ryu. And the rest of the pitching staff today, as I mentioned, Ryan Brucky had a really tough outing today. In my opinion, he's a high leverage guy. He's not a guy you throw out there in a 10 nothing ball game or a 10-2 ball game or a 12-2 ball. You don't throw him out there in an inning. Because, look, he went two-thirds in an inning, two hits, walked two, gave up three runs, and got a strikeout. He, he was not very good out there today because he likes the pressure pack situations. You can, you can see it when he's out there. He loves those situations. So today really wasn't that. You know, and they tried to get him some work in, and, and you know, he didn't do the greatest today. And Joel Piams, other than that one hit to give him the two RBIs, I did an all right job, got the two batters. I think he got the final two guys of the inning, so a good job for Piams. And then a really encouraging sight for Blue Jay fans. Out there in the top half of the ninth inning, Jordan Romano, who struggled in his first outing coming back off the injured list, was I think he was good in his last one. And today, again, a very good outing for Jordan Romano. Allowed one hit, uh, but got a strikeout, no runs, no, no walks. Clean inning for Jordan Romano, so that's a very, very good job for him. Uh, continuing to build himself up, kind of get back into that uh, back end of the rotation or back end of the bullpen type of spot for him. Now, let's talk about this offense because holy smokes, there's a lot of crazy, crazy numbers today. Let's start at the top of the shot. George Springer goes one for three today, has, gets his first hit as a Toronto Blue. He has a single to start off the ball game, walks twice and comes around to score. Also got on base with, uh, whatchamacallit, Catcher's interference. So you got on base four times. Well, you know, he only had to what? Who cares? When you're at the top of the lineup, I'm not asking this guy to get to, to hit 350. I'm, I don't care. You get on base for guys like Bo and Vladdy and Teoscar and whoever's hitting after those guys. It's a recipe for a success. And you saw that today. Springer at the top of the lineup got on base four times. Now, he only came around to score one time, but it just, the free, free flowing offense, it was, it was beautiful to see him. Bo Bichette, after that 0 for 10 stretch he was on, oh, the guy's been red hot lately. Two for five in the game, had the home run, two runs scored, and two RBIs on the two run shot. So, good day at the plate there for Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. You know, a very underwhelming one for two ball game, but that one hit was an RBI single, and he walked three times. 
Vladdy has nine, is it 19, I think it's 19 walks on the year. He's got 20 RBIs. He's struck out, what, 17 times? Some 15, 16, maybe 16, 17 times? He's walking more than he's striking out. He's got 20 RBIs in like 20, what are we at? 24 games. He's hitting over, well, about close to 350. His on-base percentage is getting close to 500. It's unbelievable watching Vladimir Guerrero Jr. go out there night in and out. It's fantastic. And Teoscar Hernandez, great to see the guy back out there. Went two for five in the game. Had the single, as I mentioned, the the, uh, the single off the end of the bat early in the game. And the three-run bomb, obviously the home run, the three RBIs, and the runs scored for Teoscar Hernandez. So it was great to see him back out there right in that cleanup hole doing his thing. And uh, Gurriel went three for five in the ball game. Are we starting to see Lourdes get a little bit hot here? He's above the Mendoza line, so that's very good news. Three for five, two runs scored, had the uh, had the home run and an RBI, so a great date to play there for Lourdes. Santiago Espinal, great to see him at third. What, you guys see that defensive play he made early in the game, that bare-headed play? Did you guys get flashbacks of Josh Donaldson with that play? Because I sure did. Two for five in the game for Espinal, had a run scored. Obviously, that was that leadoff double that he had there in the bottom half of the seventh inning that came around to score. So great job for Espinal there at third base defensively. And with the bat, he's been a he's been a, he's been a revelation there at third base. And, and every time he's out there, Jay's fans can take a breath, a sigh of relief. We can all, oh, we can breathe a little bit with him at third base. And if he gives you a two for five night with the bat, I'll take it any day. And Alejandro Kirk, have a day, young fella. Two for four in the game, scored three runs, had four RBIs, and crushed two home runs. Take this in, Jay's fans. And if you don't follow the Blue Jays Center Instagram page, go do so because I saw this on there. I love I love what Danny Jansen's done with the, with with his catching, and I feel bad for that. He seemed like a really nice guy, but Alejandro Kirk with the two home runs today has more home runs than Jansen does hits this season. It's kind of crazy, and Jays fans, your bottom three guys in the order, if I meant, if I'm correct, of Gurriel, Espinal, and Kirk. They had seven of the 14 hits. Talk about this lineup being so deep. Your bottom guys got half your hits. Your bottom three. Beautiful. That is beautiful to watch if you're a Blue Jay fan. Absolutely fantastic. Now, yes, this game is great. Yeah, we're back to 500. But the crazy thing about baseball, got to get after it the next day. Next game of the Blue Jays is tomorrow. It's game two of the three-game set against the Atlanta Braves. It's a 737 first pitch uh, at TD Ballpark. The reason it's 707, or 737, not 707, because of the sun. They changed it because of the sun. And I'm like, really? I've never seen that happen before. Charlie Morton gets the ball for the Atlanta Braves, so it's not going to be an easy one for the Blue Jays tomorrow. And I'm assuming it's going to be Trent Thornton as a, as a bullpen day tomorrow. I'm assuming Thornton's going to get the start and Malone's going to come in after him. I assume that's what we're going to see tomorrow night uh, in game two of the, of the series against the Atlanta Braves. All right. So, you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the game there this evening, because, damn, that was a good game to watch. Smack that like button. You appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video. Your thoughts on the game. What would you like? What would you not like from today's game today? Uh, it, uh, you know, also, what do you think of uh, the, the Alejandro Kirk's day? What would you think of uh, Vladdy's at bat? Springer's second game. Hernandez bat. Let me know, Robbie Ray. Let, guys, go nuts in the comments. Twitter's down below for myself. Follow up, send me a DM to like great stuff. The Instagram link is down below. So follow up there if you've not done so already. Also follow the Blue Jays Center Instagram page. Jays Banter on iTunes, Spotify, all that great stuff. Guys, go check it out on Instagram. Because they're live right now, actually, doing the post-game live stream. And if you, obviously, are watching this video late and you want to check out the post-game live stream, it's going to be on their feed and the IGTV page. It's, it's, it's Fan Friday on Blue Jays Center, so go check that out on the Blue Jays Center Instagram page. All right? And I will talk to you guys Leaves Edition tomorrow night. It's taking the Vancouver Canucks against the 7 o'clock puck drop there at Scotiabank Arena. Leaves looking to continue their winning streak and continue this momentum heading into the playoffs. Six games remain for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And as for the Raptors, they take on the Utah Jazz tomorrow night, 10 p.m. tip-off there in Utah. Hang in there. Three straight 10 p.m. tip-offs. Raptor fans, game one is tomorrow against Utah. All right, so hang in there. Um, and as I talk, as I mentioned earlier, Blue Jay fans, game two of the three games set against the Atlanta Braves goes tomorrow night, 737 first pitch at TD Ballpark. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.